Sup gamers, Baragon301 here, and today we're taking a look at a very controversial topic in the holiday community. That of course being Valentine's Day. Ah yes, Valentine's Day. That special day where everybody's meant to express their love to somebody, but really the only people who actually celebrate it are little kids who aren't even old enough to know what kissing is. Many people have tried to ask out their soon-to-be rejector on this day, and for Godzilla fans, finding a girlfriend is basically impossible. But don't worry, because I myself am quite the ladies expert. Heck, I've had two girlfriends in my time. Sure, one of them only lasted five seconds, and then the other girl didn't talk to me the whole time, but hey, they still count, right? Now the first step is to find the one. The last thing anybody wants is a female to dump you later on and then hate you for the rest of your life because they do that for some reason. Now the best thing to do is to ask them a very simple question. What's your favorite episode of Ultraman Taro? Now if they ignore you, slap you, spit on you, or say you, then congratulations, you've just embarrassed yourself. But you've also avoided a bad relationship because they would have probably dumped you on the first side of your toy collection. But if she gives you a legitimate answer, you're dreaming. Slap yourself, you need to wake up. Now, if she asks you what that is, or shows any sort of interest, then congratulations! She'll probably put up with you, and you've now found the one. Now, when it comes to actually asking out a girl, uh, I can't really help you there. Just don't do anything too weird, but I do recommend singing Never Gonna Give You Up. Now, when it comes to first dates, the easiest one, and the cheapest one, is a movie date. But you can't go to a movie theater. Have you seen the state of the world right now? Well, it looks like you're going to have to stay at your own home to watch a movie, but you've got a movie collection, right? You keep your Godzilla movies on a flash drive, don't you? Nowadays, most people just watch those fangled streaming services. But, like, what are you going to watch on Netflix with her? Star Trek or Shark Boy and Lava Girl? This is the importance of DVDs and Blu-rays, no monthly fees, and even resale value if a better version comes out. But which movie? If you're watching this, there's a good chance you're a Godzilla fan, so what about some of those movies? Well, the first ones that come to most people's mind is the Mothra movies, but like... What are you gonna watch there? Mothra vs. Godzilla? Yeah, nothing says I love you like two Japanese businessmen beating the crap out of each other. And then all the other Mothra movies are garbage, so you probably wanna watch a good movie. Now, if you do want to watch a legitimately good movie, maybe try something from the Gamma Trilogy. I recommend Guardian of the Universe. But there is one film, a mysterious film, that chicks seem to dig. And myself always said, chicks dig The Valley of Gowanji. The Valley of Gowanji is a 1969 western featuring dinosaurs. Checkmate, cowboys versus aliens. The plot follows a man named Tucker who is trying to hook back up with a woman named TJ who owns a traveling circus with her father. The thing is, Tucker ran out on them last time. While Tucker's trying to get TJ to sell one of her attractions, he meets up with a young boy named Lopi who introduces him to a paleontologist named Professor Bromley. Professor Bromley has a fossil with the footprint of a tiny prehistoric horse, and it just so happens that TJ has the living thing, an Eohippus. Thanks to this guy named Carlos who captured it, she plans on putting it in the show. And after showing it to Tucker, he shows it to the professor who tries to figure out where it was found. But when they go to ask Carlos about it, he ignores them and an old blind woman warns them that the Eohippus must be returned to the Forbidden Valley. So the professor tells her where it is in an attempt to find the valley. So the old woman's boys steal the horse and take off towards the valley. Tucker finds out about this and quickly follows them, and when TJ finds out about it, Carlos blames Tucker. The stage is now set. The whole cast is headed for the Forbidden Valley in pursuit of the tiny horse. Eventually, they all meet up and try to recapture the horse, but it escapes and leads them into an even bigger and crazier valley. They then discover a whole treasure trove of prehistoric creatures, pterosaurs, a styracosaurus, and of course, Gowanji the Allosaurus. Or maybe it's a T-Rex. The film does take a little while to get going, but I feel like it's some needed setup. The characters can all seem like jerks around the start, but it ends up being a good thing when they have to w set aside their past quarrels to survive. Plus, I do like the chemistry between TJ and Tuck, as he's really just trying to undo what he had done in the past. But when they all get to the valley, the action doesn't stop. 
There are plenty of great sequences. Lopi gets picked up by a pterosaur, Gawanji fights a Styracosaurus, and I think everyone can agree the standout scene is the lasso scene. Oh man, the effects in this film are great. Honestly, effects nowadays, for as good as they look, have lost all their charm. You can basically do whatever you want with CGI if you've got a big enough budget, but I believe truly good effects are those that make you ask, how did they do that? And the value of Gawanji certainly does that. Now not all the effects are great, there's a few life-size Gawanji props that look pretty bad, and an ugly life-size pterosaur. But the glorious stop motion done by Ray Harryhausen is the best of the best. The lasso scene, as I said, is an absolute spectacle. Three or four cowboys on horses with lassos around Gawanji's neck, and the ropes even line up perfectly with the ropes in the actor's hands. And the stop motion all around looks clean. Harry Harryhausen has a way with putting so much life and character into his creatures and always has such seamless motion with his monsters. Now the lasso thing ends up not working and so they all flee from the valley with Gawanji on their tails. Carlos gets killed and Gawanji ends up getting knocked out when he tries to get through the tunnel they used to get in. So if you're somebody who owns a circus and has an unconscious dinosaur at your feet, despite all the movies like this, what do you do? Yep, they put Gawanji in the show. Of course, it goes wrong as the old lady has one of her men try to sabotage the show, but ends up getting eaten. Guanji is now on the loose and after fighting an elephant, moves on to the fleeing crowd. Tucker leads Guanji into a big church and after escaping him with TJ and Lopi, he burns the place down with Guanji inside, ending the movie. If any parts of that sounded familiar, that's because the original script was written by Willis O'Brien, the guy who did the effects for the original King Kong. Uh, apparently, Harry hasn't found the script in his garage. Another great thing about this film is its soundtrack. The main theme is this awesome combination of suspense and dread, combined with the more upbeat tune, giving it an exciting western vibe. It perfectly complements the film, and it plays throughout the whole movie, usually changing up a bit to fit with each scene. Overall, The Valley of Gawanji is a fantastic film. Definitely one of, if not the best, Harry Harryhausen film. The characters are all pretty good and enjoyable to watch. They do come across as jerks around the start, but in the end I think it helps out the film. And it gives Tucker and TJ a nice arc together. The action scenes are all great. They are all well done and most of the effects are top tier. If you're somebody who doesn't like dinosaurs that are inaccurate, get over it. Dinosaurs that are considered accurate now will be laughed at in a few decades. Here, despite their dated designs, they look awesome. The value of Gawanji is pure Kino. If you haven't seen this film, I definitely recommend that you check it out. And if you're single and don't have a DVD, Blu-ray, or even a VHS copy of this, take a hint. I hope I see you all again next time.